morning everybody I am Abby Elizabeth and this is the Earthen Vessels YouTube channel this is a channel for Christian women but anyone is welcome to listen praise be to God for another day in which we can consider his holy word and learn to walk the narrow way Jesus Christ said that the way unto life is narrow and few find it and one thing we know as Christians and for those of you who are not Christians yet who are listening to this channel, the way that we begin to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ is to obey his gospel by being baptized in his holy name. And the holy name that we are baptized in is Jesus Christ. That is the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Glory be to God. If you have questions about that, please write to me and I'd be happy to assist you. So the way that we begin to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ is to enter into covenant with him. And that is how we enter into the blood covenant and are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ and adopted in to the family of Jesus Christ. And the first thing usually that happens once something, pardon me, once someone has done that is the devil comes along and tries to knock you off the narrow way. I want to speak to some specific things about this uh, in this video. So let's begin today in the Word of God in 1 Peter chapter 5. And may the Lord bless the reading of his holy word today. 1 Peter and chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. When we come to salvation, when we've been baptized in Jesus' name, we've either received the Holy Spirit or we're waiting for it, but it's promised unto us. The devil wants to snatch away the little lambs who are just saved. And there are certain ways that he does this. And in particular, I want to talk about how he knocks people off the path by getting them to focus on the past. Now, I'm going to give you a little uh, parable here, a little example of how this works. If you are someone who has ever walked on a narrow bridge, a narrow bridge with no no railings on either side. You know, it's a very disconcerting thing to do that, especially if the bridge is up high. If one is in such a situation and they're looking down, if they're looking at their feet, if they're looking at the gorge below or the boiling oil below or whatever it is, they're going to falter and they're going to fall. And the devil knows this. I'm speaking about spiritual things here. When we are walking the narrow way, we need to remember where to keep our focus. Before we came to be saved by Jesus Christ by being baptized in his name, we knew we were a hopeless sinner in need of salvation. And that's why we obeyed the gospel. And now the devil is trying to get us to look back, look down, do anything but focus on Jesus. And the best way he can do this, of course, is to remind us of our former sins. You know, I was a sinner. I was perhaps one of the chief among sinners, and I'm not trying to exalt sin here. But verily I say unto you, it doesn't matter what happened before. It does not matter. Paul the Apostle, whose name was Saul before, before he was serving Jesus Christ and his kingdom, he was known as Saul, of Tarsus. He persecuted the church at Jerusalem. He sought after men and women who were of the narrow way and brought them into prison and tortured them, causing them to blaspheme. And yet, now that's a very serious thing, is it not, my sisters? And yet, when he was on his way to Damascus to do more of that, he met Jesus Christ and he fell to his knees. He was blinded for a few days 
And then the Lord Jesus Christ sent someone to preach the gospel to him. And when someone preached the gospel to him, he was straight away baptized in the name of the Lord, washing away his sins. And I want to emphasize this here. Washing away sins. It doesn't matter what happened before. It does not matter what happened before. Yes, we regret the things that we did in times past, and we remember them because it keeps us humble. But we don't remember them unto self-condemnation because the sorrow of the world worketh death. When we become a Christian, we are deciding to follow Jesus Christ. And what I will say to you about this is you can't follow someone if you're not looking at them. And if you're looking at yourself and your past and what the perils at your feet or, or the troubles of this life, you will fall. In order to be a disciple of Jesus Christ and walk that narrow way, that narrow bridge without railings, all the way to the kingdom of God, you have to keep your eyes on Jesus, not on yourself, not on your faults, not on your failures. Verily I say unto you, we all fail sometimes. I know I do. And I, I don't feel good about it when I fail. But when I fail, I remember the mercy and truth of God, which is far better and far higher than what I can construct in my own heart about my own worthiness. Glory be to God. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. Glory be to God. Let's begin here in verse 12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. And verily, this is what Satan's trying to get you to do. He's trying to get you to think something like, well, my sin was too great to be covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. And that is actually arrogant and prideful. But the devil does this subtly. He gets us to, to feel condemned about the horrible things we did in times past. And the thing is, then we've forgotten to believe in the Savior. We've forgotten to believe in the gospel. And if we don't watch our step, we will not enter into the kingdom of God just like ancient Israel because they too didn't have faith. God had led them out of Egypt through the Red Sea, led them in the wilderness for 40 years, and now they were standing at the promised land. And someone who doesn't believe that the promised land is promised to them cannot enter in. And their parents had fallen at that point. You see, when Israel first came to the promised land, they said, oh, there are giants in the land. Oh, Oh, we can't overcome this thing. It's too big for us. And, and they turned back. And that is an evil heart of unbelief. It's when we forget what God has done for us and we turn back or we look down and we start to look at ourselves instead of at our God who saved us from all that. Glory be to Verse 13, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. We don't want to be hardened. We don't want to give up. We don't want to lose our faith. We want to remember that it's not about what we did. It's about what Jesus Christ did. And it's not what about we do. It's about what he does in us. Verse 14, For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. So did you believe the gospel and obey it? Were you confident that you could be saved from your sins because you believed the gospel of Jesus Christ? Well, hold fast to that, my sisters. Keep regarding 
your savior. Don't regard what happened before. Don't even regard the stupidity that's in your own heart today. If I did that, I would do nothing for the Lord. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. Howbeit, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. Glory be to God. So now let's go to, I believe it's First Thessalonians. I always get books that have um, one and two. I always get them mixed up. And as hard as I try not to do that, it still happens. Well, it is 1 Thessalonians. Let's um, read here, starting in verse 14 of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, Comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil unto evil, pardon me, see that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You know, I had a lot of things in my life before I came to salvation. I lived 57 years before I came to salvation. But everything that I did that was wrong and everything bad that happened to me has been used by God to help others enter into the kingdom of God. And Satan wants to trick you. He wants you to think, oh, well, you're too bad to enter in. Well, that's a lie. Everything that he intended for evil, when you went under the water of baptism in Jesus' name, those things will now be used for the glory of God. Hallelujah. In everything, give thanks. Give thanks for those things that were bad that you did before because they will keep you humble but they will also be used of the Lord as you help others to enter in. In everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesyings. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. And Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, entirely. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved, blameless, unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who will also do it who will also do it. I pray this message has lifted you up, those of you who are struggling with self-condemnation and the accusations of the enemy. Welcome to the narrow way. The condition that you're in when this happens is one where you need to cast the devil away from you in Jesus' name. Say, get behind me, Satan. I've been saved from all that in the name of Jesus Christ. And then Pick up your cross and look up and keep going. Glory be to God. I remain here for you. Feel free to email me if you like or to comment in the comment section below. And may the word of the Lord go forth today and bring many into a perfect peace in their mind as they recognize that it's not about us. It's about him.